Thanks everyone for being here this evening. This is the Zoom talk for the exhibition Botanical Inspirations. And it features work by Antonetta Denkin, who goes by Tony, Jure Edmonds, Linda Gist, Nancy Sophie, Susan Van Campen, and Camille Ward. Now, uh, Tony, she can't be with us tonight, and Camille will be joining later, and hopefully Jure comes at some point. So I'm going to... Uh, Spotlight uh, Tina's video. So we can see, um, so we're going, what we're going to do is travel through the exhibition and speak about the works that uh, we see. So in this uh, view, there's three works. It's Linda Gist, Camille Ward, and Susan Van Campen. So Linda, maybe you want to kick us off and tell us a little bit about yourself and your work. Sure. Um, I spent most of my life as an illustrator and it's been, um, I don't know, maybe 20 years or so since I started doing, maybe more than that, since I started doing botanical work. And when I started out, I, did, I didn't know what botanical, officially what a botanical drawing and painting was and how it differed from flower painting. And I did it by myself uh, as part of just my own personal work when I wasn't doing a commission piece. And then I began to meet other people who were doing it and I, I began to learn what it's about, what botanical work, what botanical painting really is in, in the strictest sense, the botanical painting with the, um, scientific heritage. Um, so uh, this particular piece, I, I always have to have a reason to do anything. Uh, everybody knows who does work like this, that it's a long relationship. You, it's, it's very um, meditative and you sort of commune with a plant for weeks and and really get to know it very well. So there has to be a reason to do it because it is such a long um, and kind of intense relationship. So with this one, with this particular painting, um, this, was, <laughs> this was love at first sight. I walked into my sister-in-law's house and she had this geranium and I just fell for the gesture. I just love the gesture and the, the asymmetry of the way it grew, uh, and then just the structure of the leaves and all of that. So this was a pretty simple choice. It was, I see that, I want to paint that. And so she gave it to me, I took it home, and it took about a year for it to do it again. Um, and then when it did, I did, I did uh, paint it. This is watercolor with some um, colored pencil. Thanks, Linda. Sure. <clears throat> so we'll skip over Camille till she gets here. <laughs> and so Susan, we have one of your paintings here. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and your practice? Sure. Um, Am I, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, I have always gardened and so I'm really just really interested in what grows out back in the garden and uh, between all the weeds because I'm not a perfect gardener but I think flowers and fruits and all of nature's um, bounty is worth painting and I um, really enjoy it for now probably 45 years. Um, I started doing, I started in college as in um, art school at Pennsylvania Academy as a um, portrait painter in oil and I only learned how to paint in oil and then when I was 
um, traveling a little bit, I took watercolors with me and my early watercolors were really bad, but I thought they were so much fun and they were, and I thought they were good actually, but they were terrible that I just kept on painting and um, watercolor became my favorite um, way to paint and flowers. I painted cows for a long time and then I sort of switched to flowers because that's when I started gardening and I was in my early 20s. So I just fall in love with the way flowers are shaped and how they come back every year and many times I paint the same flowers over and over year to year and people say oh I have a painting just like that and I say no it's not just like that because it was another year and all the flowers are different this year <laughs> even if they're the same kind of flower but I don't know I just I, I am still always intrigued by everything that grows and all their stages of life from like uh, little pods little uh little buds to open you know frilly flowers to closing back up again and becoming uh, pods and then in the middle of November just the dead the dead sunflowers still standing out in the garden so all of it gets really, me really excited and that's what I have continued to do <laughs> luckily I sell some so <laughs> that helps Thanks, Susan. You're welcome. So we have two of uh, uh, Nancy's pieces here. So Nancy. Thank you. Um, so my name's Nancy Sophie. I'm Philadelphia-based um, artist. I do works on paper, painting, light boxes, and these are two um, works of mine on paper that are unpigmented oil and pastel on paper. And I really find inspiration from the natural world and natural forms. They're used mostly as a way of abstraction. I start with sketching and drawing and collecting imagery that's used as visual vocabulary. Um, my work is very much personal and about, you know, myself, my childhood, my heritage. Um, the two pieces that are here that you see, one is the Garden of Solitude and the other one is called Sophie's House. And these are both inspired by when I was received a travel grant and went to Lebanon and to, you know, particularly the area like in Beirut and also the Cedars and went and just collected imagery from where my grandfather's house was. And it played into, when I came back, all this natural forms from plants, um, shadows, often things like that. I broke down, sort of working with, working with, and then using a technique where I'm using materials that become part of the paper, um, the unpigmented oil, the pastel that's ground into it. So with this, you know, what you're seeing here is really, you know, this combination of imagery of the natural world. But as I said, it really starts at one place and then the final product is um, completely has a life of its own. So Nancy, does your technique allow any room for correction or is that it once it's no, so it's a very long process. And that's why, as I said, it, first it is really drawing more representational and that's usually done with pencil. Sometimes I'll use watercolor. So I have lots and lots, it's, it's a little bit like note taking. And um, what I choose to work from when it comes to plants, one thing was, you know, a memory of the grape leaves in my grandmother's garden. And so, you know, really looking for certain imagery and then when I get to the point that I want to do a final product like this, you know, it's a lot of, you know, sometimes just failure, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work. And then I start again, but I have something in mind that I want. And then, you know, when I, when it appears, that's what I know that I want it to be.
Thanks, Nancy. Mm -hmm. So these two paintings here, these are Tony Denkin. And unfortunately, Tony can't be with us tonight, but we'll take a look. So she's studying uh, natural forms and using watercolor. And apparently she's only been doing this for the last few years, so she's become quite accomplished. She said five, didn't five. she, Mike? On well, Mike was arguing. He said it was less than five, her okay. husband, so. Okay, but well, he, he would know. <laughs> I, I thought she on the-, mm. on yeah, the right. Oh, that's right. She did say five at the talk talk. Yeah, yeah. But, um, well, so. I can't remember years either. <laughs> <laughs> but they're quite beautiful. Am I the only one who sees an eye? <laughs> Where? In this? In yes. Does any does anybody else see an eye there? I meant to ask Tony about it, if anybody else had seen a, an eye in the middle of that rose. Mm. No, just me. Well, okay. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> really, that's fine. I really find her composition so engaging, I have to say. Like, I very much yes. enjoy both of these. But, you know, particularly the one on the bottom is just very playful. And then I agree with you. Like, then you start to look and you're sort of looking a little bit closer. Um, at the imagery and the way that it's, you know, sort of having a conversation with each other, some of the wilted leaves and the, the mm -hmm. flower. We're only seeing part of a stem, which makes me feel like it's sort of emerging from the background. Well, it's hard to pull off such a composition with yeah. the negative space, just the paper. You don't have anything to hang on to, so. So Linda, this is another of yours. Is this one is a egg tempera? Did you say exactly? Yeah, this is an egg tempera, um, and I do go back and forth. I'm sort of I'm restless, uh, so I I do enjoy. I don't enjoy every media, but I I enjoy oils and watercolor and colored pencil with watercolor and but this one is. Um, is done in egg tempera with tempera paints and with watercolors with egg. So it's it's kind of a, a hybrid and it's done on board. And uh, I don't know if this is okay with you, Mike, but um, if I just answer Kathleen Cohen's Oh, question, go ahead, yes. Ahead. Yeah. People, uh, and it's a small enough group people could- Exactly, we can do anything. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Margo. <laughs> um, yeah. So with this one, uh, I, I, I think I said in the beginning, I have to have a reason because it is a, a long relationship most of the time in, in botanical painting. And with this one, um, we grew these paratulips this year and it, it looks, I just love these surfaces. And it reminds me of, do you know, if you ever see paintings or, or films of speeded up cloud formations, that's a little bit what these forms feel like to me, where the for, the clouds roil and change and um, and just evolve. So for me, this is almost an abstraction. Uh, it's still a representational painting, but it's it's just two things basically. It's just the the dark background and the the yellow paratulip. And it's just an exploration of these forms that I could do forever. I never get tired of exploring this kind of, if you get close enough, it's almost unrecognizable. And I, I love that aspect of, uh, of painting natural forms. And I said, I was going to answer Kathleen's question <laughs> and then I just didn't, but, um, <laughs> Kathleen, the, the first paint, this is done on board. All, most egg tempers are done on um, board. So it was only, I think of the things I have here, it's only the first 
the geranium that was done on uh, paper. And I wish I could tell you which paper. That was Kathleen's question was which paper. It, it was probably old Arches paper. Uh, Arches paper has changed. So I think this was a piece of old Arches paper, which was a better quality or else aquarelle. Um, I really can't remember, but it was a, it was not a difficult to get watercolor paper. It was, it was one of the most more available watercolor papers. Uh, and then it, you know, it takes the watercolor and the color pencil equally well. So that was a question about the first image. So it was, I wish I could be more specific, but I, I really can't remember which one I used. It's beautiful. Thank you. With the way you paint, can you talk a little bit about your process? Um, well, I don't draw except for the glass, only because I don't want it to look lopsided. So I um, just, the, the, the bouquet is set before me just as it is with the flower, with the fruit on the side or whatever. And I'm <clears throat> right at the same counter, straight on. Um, I try to have a blank wall behind it, but sometimes I have a clutter. And um, I um, draw the glass and then I just start with the flowers. And I, it's, I, I, I found that I work from left to right, but I sort of just bounce around all over the paper and I just keep structuring it. Um, when I set up the still life, I'm, uh, I'm very conscious. I, I take a while to do it because I want it to look a certain way. And then once I have it the way I want it, I just sort of stand before it and copy the flowers, but I do tend to get lazy and leave things out or, uh, you know, if I don't feel like I have room for something, I, it's getting squashed, then I don't paint that leaf or that flower. And so I do um, kind of orchestrate it as I go along, but I pretty much paint what's there. So I paint flowers first, because they last the least, I mean, the daylilies are gonna close by the end of the day. So I do the daylilies, I do, I do things in order of how they live and die. Then I, the leaves usually last longer. The glass and the water and the stems are usually last. So it's kind of like I've learned an order to, uh, I, I've learned how to, um, paint according to the flowers' lives, in a way. Any other question about that? Or was that clear enough? Yeah, it seems very direct and immediate. It's pretty immediate and it's pretty fast. I work pretty fast with pretty big brush strokes. Um, and then like second layer, I only work in about two layers. so. The first layer is all, wherever the soft edges are, that's all one layer. And then <clears throat> the second layer are like the stamens and the, uh, you know, the, all the details are usually a second layer. There could be a third layer, but mostly two. It's amazing. <laughs> I, I love the, I, I just wrote in chat, that I love the the wetness. Your your dry painting still has that wonderful watercolor wetness, and that kind of spontaneity and freshness. So I just I love them. Thank you. It seems very fearless. I'm scared when I paint. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I, I ask. I mean, you know, not. I'm just being, I'm being somewhat facetious, but this is like, you know. I'm scared when I'm on a 40 by 60 piece of paper, yeah. but when I'm 23 by 30, I'm not, not too worried. Dragging that brush across the white paper is scary. 
because it's dripping usually. <laughs> I try not to drip. Um, I have dripped. I just have to wipe it up as fast as possible. And if it's green, it's it never goes away. So it's pretty... Uh, I've just learned how to hold my brush, hold, put my hand under it if it's really wet, get over there. Um, sometimes on especially the 40 by 60s, when that paper is so precious, then I do put down uh, other sheets of paper over the top so I can not splatter. But then sometimes I just want to splatter the whole thing, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Susan. You're welcome. <clears throat> so this is uh, one of Jeray Edmonds' photographs. Um, I don't think Jeray made it in, unfortunately. But Jeray does a lot of things. He's like a filmmaker and um, I know him from distribution. That is, he distributes like catalogs and postcards and things. And that's where we met um, like 20 or so years ago doing that stuff. So, um, you know, we're happy to have his work here. And, at, you know, in his travels, he takes pictures of um, flowers and fauna and because he goes all over the city. So um, the works in this show are... Uh, a few uh, examples of, of that. Oh. So you want me to get out of the way? You can see me there. All right. So <laughs> we're turning over to the other side of the exhibit. And um, Linda, this one is yours. Yeah, and this was, I think this was also egg tempera. And this is one of two. Uh, I didn't plan to do this painting, but I was, I was in the uh, market and I saw these pluots and I was just fascinated by, they, they have a sort of glow. If you've stopped to look at pluots <laughs> in your <laughs> travels um, and I just love the way the color laid one of a pair of two and it's the same both of them were studies of just the way the color lays on a pluot and uh, it, it was unplanned I just happened to see them and brought them home and and did them so take it away Jeray sure. thank you um it's this has been an interesting experience um I'm at work Anyway, uh, I guess you wanted to know about the process or- Well, you can tell first. us a little bit about yourself and, okay. and the work you do, how it came well, to I, Well, initially I started as a, a art student at PAPA, uh, which I started through the uh, ninth school. Um, my family has had a, a long affiliation um, in the art and uh, cultural, you know, culturally. Um, so my interest has always been, whether it was in painting, sculpture, or primarily in printmaking. Uh, through that time period, basically, I went into more of the visual thing, uh, such as acting and, and doing things in production and in film. Uh, my, my, my favorite forte is, is, is definitely observation. And um, I like a lot of things in regards to um, composition, texture, tone, things of that sort. Um, and also the fact that um, I guess to incorporate uh, my experience, I started doing dabbling in, in other areas. Uh, to cut a long story short, the work that is presented in this exhibition is something that I went back to, and due to the fact of the pandemic, um, it, I went through a period of depression. And to help me get through that, 
I went around different neighborhoods, different things, because there wasn't anything to do. Uh, my, my working background uh, pretty much uh, was, was gone. Um, I work in hospitality in the service end. I work in um, film work and things of that sort. And everything was, was, was just stopped. And so, of course, uh, finances, different things. So what I did was I started going out. And I reconnected, and, and, and it was more or less a reflection of what I saw. And that's the prints that I saw gave me that inspiration of, you know, life, um, that energy, that, that, you know, I saw, I saw beauty again. I, I didn't see despair. Um, some people see, you know, beauty in, in different things. I saw that in life and flowers. Um, so I hope that comes across. Um, I started playing around with, like I said, textures, tones, going out at different times, whether it was after rain, at night, um, different different things. I mean, I'm still a novice. Uh, I'm still learning. Uh, and, and this has been a new experience for me. And, um, you know, I, I appreciate the opportunity of being part of this ex exhibition. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you. Hello. We're still here. Oh, okay. We're just moving. I'm finished. I, I, <laughs> just, sorry, I'm a little nervous, you know. That's okay. We're just, what we're doing is floating through the exhibition and talking about things as they appear, so. Unfortunately, I can't see any of the stuff. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. That's yes. That's only, I only have audio. Okay. And I couldn't get in through because this is so far. It wouldn't let me. Right. You know, it didn't trust the, the the device, and I have an iPhone, so I I can't see. But I enjoy the other people's work, the other artists. Um, I think this is a, a wonderful opportunity to to share and be part of. Um, I'm just very appreciative and. Uh, you know what more can I say? <laughs> well, we're this happy to. A, this has been excellent. We're happy to yeah. have you and your work here. After all Thank these you. years. Thank you. So now we're zooming in on another of Susan's paintings. So Susan, you're up in Maine, right? I'm in Maine. I can't decide if I'm hot or cold today. <laughs> What's the temperature? I don't know. I think it. I don't know. What happens is we get this wind and then it cools down and then the sun comes back out and then it's hot. And so I think it's probably in the 60s right now. So it's hot. <laughs> oh, it's humid here. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it's pretty humid too. It's very humid here. It's very persistent for September. So in your garden, you plant, do you plant for painting? Like, do you plant things with a mind to painting them or? Yes, yes. But I also have just repeat flowers that, you know, perennials that come up every year. And I, yeah, I do plant. I mean, people are always inviting me over to paint their flowers, but I have so many of my own that I just, I just, can't, it gets overwhelming. And I, I uh, do overwhelmed when it, everything's blooming and then the next blooms are coming so sometimes I just paint the flowers on my paintings and I have to go back later and do the um vase or the leaves or because I can always pick more leaves but the flowers like peonies for example die you know they all fall off but all the leaves are still there so sometimes I can recreate the leaves uh you know and and as long as the the flowers are finished. So it's all like, there's a whole timing thing going on, I think, with my work. <laughs> um, these, da these are dahlias, um, red, beautiful, clear. So I try to uh, make sort of a variety of, like some are oversimplified 
you know, to just being looking totally flat and others have sort of centers suggested in them and others I paint the center. So I just want to have the your eye go all over with and get a different look from each flower. That's what I've sort of found work for me. Is somebody asking something? I think it's uh, just some background noise. But your, oh. your work has a very graphic quality in, you know, on top of the observational part. Like the, the forms are very defined, but, uh, you know, it's, um, so it's quite interesting. Well, yeah, so they're, they're kind of hard edges yeah. that, that, that are very, uh, I just paint really wet. So the hard edges just happen with the brush strokes. And then, um, so there's a whole flowing thing going on, but a, it can be a rigid edge. All right, thanks, Susan. So sure. what we're gonna do is skip ahead a little bit to Camille Ward, who's joined us, I believe. Uh, so, sorry I'm late. I, um, I, ju I just came back from school, so I got on as quickly as I could. <laughs> that's, that's no problem, Camille. So, All right. uh, so now we're at two years here. If you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and your, uh, your work. Well, um, gosh, what? I, I live in Philly. Um, I teach at Community College in Drexel. And, um, and I paint and natural forms have always been a real interest of mine. Um, not necessarily just flowers, but um, all kinds of organic forms. So the ones in this exhibition, um, I mean, obviously are, you know, really focused on floral um, subject matter. And so um, that's, that's what I have in this show. And the one that Tina's kind of train, trained on right now, that's, um, that's, that's, a, that's a little bit, that's a little bit more characteristic of the kind of subject matter I'm more interested in. It's, it, it relates to plants, but um, I mean, I mean, it is a plant, but um, I also like sort of cast off things. I like acorns and bark and things that contribute to the floral world, but may not be as noticeable, they may not be as beautiful, um, they may not have as much color. So I, mean, I kind of switch back and forth. So sometimes sometimes I, I'm attracted to really, really bright, beautiful things and other times I'm not. And I mean, the milkweed painting is, um, you know, for me, it was, it, you know, the milkweed, it's a, it's a spent, it's spent, it's got, it's seed, it's, you know, now it's casting seed. So it is not, you know, it's not in its glory, but, um, you know, what I do is I find, I find the subject matter and I do one of two things. So the one on the left is just like a chunk from my garden. I just, you know, I kind of go out there and, and there it is. I mean, obviously I edit and I, you know, I crop and I, you know, I, I kind of zero in on what I'm interested in. Um, the more typical way I work is a composite sort of way um, where I'm taking um, in the case of the milkweed, I, I, I have, I have that and I'm working from life. This is almost exclusively how I work, in fact. So I have the milkweed, I'm working from life. It's either in the studio or out. In this case, it was in, you know, I brought the branch in and then I, I just, I added everything else, not from a photograph, not from working on site, but from memory and from whim. So I respond, I simply responded to the milkweed. So, I mean, obviously, you know, the sky and the, the landscape, the landscape is, is like, a, a, like a sort of a vague memory of um, a location in England, actually Hadrian's Wall. The sky, I, I thought it should have a moody sky because it was, a, you know, it, I, what I wanted was I wanted a stormy sky because it looked like one of the milkweed seeds was about to go flying. 
So, I mean, this is how I kind of respond. So I, I'll Neil, uh, we can't hear you now. Are you, how's your audio? I'm having a lot of, can you hear me at all? Yeah, now we can hear you. Sorry, I'm having a with my audio. My Yes. Oh, it's in and out. Maybe if you get a little closer to your... Uh... It's, it's actually because it's, well, I'm, have, I'm just having problems with my actual speakers. So, and I... On to begin with, but anyway, as I was saying, I, I you know, what I, do, I, I cobble together a painting. So some of it's from life, for sure, and that's usually the subject, usually, and the rest of it is usually from memory. So, and then the one on the left again, that's that was a more direct. I just kind of went out into the into the garden and just painted that chunk. So I mean, I I do work different ways, but. The way I handle I handle the milkweed, that's that's a typical way for me to work. I can't hear you. We're gonna swing around to see your other. Oh, can't hear you. How about now? Oh yes, yes. <laughs> I'm dropping out. I I think there's something actually wrong with the connection. I'm really sorry about that. That's okay. We have Zoom, so. Uh, you know, I really fast. <laughs> um, and then this this painting that that Tina is showing that's that that's similar. I mean, all of those plants were in my garden. They were they grew together like that. Um, this is for me more of a design. It's just you know I love the color. I love the you know there's no there's no depth in the painting in terms of you know actual structural depth. And I just love the color and the distribution of color. And so I just painted it and I, I, I then, I then added in a sky. Hey, Mike, I think you're on, um, you're on mute. There I'm you go. On mute, yes. Okay, good. I wanted to make sure it wasn't my, my audio again. <laughs> no, no, I'm here. Good. So yeah, and all of these are oil on panel. So, um, and I've also worked in paper, there's an oil paper that Arches has, and um, I kind of like it. It's a little, it's a little dry. The surface is a little dry. Um, you could mount it on onto a piece of board or piece of, or on even onto canvas if you really want. Um, and I've I've found working small is, is it works very nicely actually. But um, I don't know, I don't know what it's, I don't know if I scale up. It's going to be a challenge to work that way. Thanks, Camille. Okay. So we're steering the ship around <laughs> again. Here, so here comes Nancy. So Nancy, can you tell us about this piece in particular? Yes. Um, so this piece is um, Sita's Night Garden. And this is also made with poppy seed oil, and pastel on paper. And for this one, um, Sita is, what that means is that's grandmother in Lebanese. And so with this, um, you know, and it's interesting, I've been thinking a lot about my work and the way I collect imagery and use it as, you know, again, the symbols of plants and things like that in natural forms, which as I'm listening to the other artists in here, it's like reminding me that the year between undergrad and grad school before coming to PAFA, I, I actually did work in a flower shop and I was fascinated by the plants. And I think it's something that I've just loved my whole life. This one in particular though, with Sitta's Night Garden, um, really comes from a childhood memory of this garden where she would send us up to get um, grape leaves. And so, you know, it was, there's a process that I go through, as I mentioned, which is, you know, really allowing the imagery to sort of, you know, not just, record it, um, but I gather, collect, simplify, and then find different ways to apply the poppy seed oil to the paper and then reveal it with the pastel. 
Um, one of the things is that these works are all on paper that are framed. I also do light boxes that they're backlit um, so that you can see imagery. And um, the colors are very significant for me. And it's one of the things I love about this show, Mike, and what you and Tina sort of put together and also all the other artists and their wonderful work in this show. It's just the way that, you know, we're all sort of seeing the natural world and color in the world and some of it, um, you know, whether it's very much present or more subtle, um, just, you know, really enjoying it. Yeah, I was gonna ask you about your palette because it, it seems very specific for each piece. Yeah, so, you know, really a lot of it has to do, again, just coming back to that idea of like, you know, symbols and things like that. So here, you know, as I said, it's, it's really has to do with, you know, from memory, from the past, but also, you know, I used the gold in there to sort of signify light, but also I had a, you know, it also has a symbol with my, you know, in a special place with my grandmother. With the other two pieces in the show, you know, it really does have to, you know, just bring that emotional quality of, you know, how color just brings our, you know, certain mood to a piece enhances the texture, the line, the composition, and things like that. So this question for you, Nancy, whether, when do you decide to backlight a piece or not? Okay, thanks Vivian. Yes, yeah, so that's a really great question. Um, one of the things, and I know I had shared this before, I started the, working with unpigmented oil on paper back as far as 2000. And I really was just, I'm, trained as an oil painter, figurative painter, and I started to decide to draw with linseed oil on paper, and I would hang them in the windows of my South Philadelphia studio, and I often thought, oh, at nighttime, it'd be nice to see them. So here I was realizing that I needed to build light boxes. So what happens next is I really don't set out to make a light box. It's really the, you know, I allow the pieces to evolve, and then often I'll hold them up to, I have a, a light box that is kind of my installed in my studio as a decision maker. And it really is about if the piece needs to be illuminated or if it can, if I really enjoy the way it looks standing on its own. So it's, it's a little bit unpredictable, but that's part of my process. I like the fact that I can't necessarily control um, the medium very, you know, in, it's unpredictable the medium, but also whether I decide to use a light box or not to back for a backlight. Thanks, Nancy. So we're coming up to another uh, one of Tony Denkin's pieces. I like this because it looks like they're in a, looks like a parade of <laughs> <laughs> They're marching. <laughs> it's got a very whimsical quality to it. Uh -huh. I didn't see that before. It's like a promenade. Mm -hmm. I like that she shows the the bulb. Yeah, I like the idea that the bulb is there. That's where all the hard work is. Um, and um, that's also cast off. That's something that appeals to me quite a bit too. So I love that. I love seeing that. It's, um, that's where it all happens and it's got its own beauty. And um, she also did horse chestnuts. I think there's a painting of that and I probably missed it because it's on the other wall. And that, that was also, she also sort of very lovingly sort of portrayed that, I thought. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of those uh, nuts this time of year, squashed and coming out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And we're coming up on, uh, Linda, one of your pieces. And this is a, seems to have a particular quality to it. 
Yeah, this was about beauty in senescence. It's obviously past its youth. This was uh, in the autumn. And I was just struck by how beautiful the, the dying plant was. And I really, um, I was just captivated by the forms that the leaves took as they dried and curled and the colors that happened uh, so different from the fresh green leaves, but in their own way beautiful, um, even as they're giving up the ghost. So I, I, I just, I walked by this one day and it didn't, it wasn't in my garden and I just asked if I could have it and brought it home and painted it. And again, this is um, egg tempera on board. I think this might be, I told somebody at the opening that this was true gesso, but I think this might be in caustic board. Um, what is that? It's, it's one of the ampersand series and everybody who uses, <laughs> this is a side, a little side trip, but everybody who uses uh, egg tempera has been searching for something other than these, this true gesso board that we all get from uh, New Mexico. And I think they've actually gone out of business, but for a lot of reasons, we've been looking for a substitute. So one of the, I've been running through lots of different, it has to be rigid because egg temper needs to be on something that doesn't bend generally. Um, so I ran through the ampersand series and when I got to an encaustic board, it was pretty close to the, to the feeling of true gesso. There's a certain quality to the way, and true gesso is just gesso made in the traditional way without acrylic. So it has an absorbency and a, a kind of velvety surface that everybody loves, but there are problems in, in getting it. Um, so yeah, so encaustic board has, has some of the same qualities. So I, uh, I've been trying some things on it and I'm, I'm pretty happy with encaustic board. It's different from the other ampersand boards. Well, it's beautiful. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. So does anybody have questions for the artists? Artists, questions for each other at this point? Well, this is not a question, but I just, when I walked in uh, on the 11th, when we were here in person, I just love the fact that we all had we're all drawn to similar, to natural forms in different ways and, and yet how differently we, we express our interest in, in these natural forms. I just love the fact that there were six people looking through 12 different eyes <laughs> at, at the world. I, I thought that was really fun. Yes, it's a, it's a beautiful show, and we uh, thank you for thank being you. in it. Thank you. Yes, I love hearing how you did them, and I love the variety, and I'm almost personifying some of the plants and making them. This, the one with the bulbs, it looks like dancers to me, and I'm having a very good time listening. <laughs> Even though, and I'm all, the only non-painter here, I think. Yes. Um, well, Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Love to come. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, artists. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, thank you. Give you a round of applause. For, <laughs> thank you. For a wonderful show. Thanks thank again you. for coming. Thanks Bye. again to you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.